Well, we're very excited. Uh, this is a big day for us um, because it, it puts an end to a, a lot of really, really hard work. And, um, you know, when I was first introduced as the head football coach here uh, in that press conference, I uh, made a publicly committed statement about trying to keep local players here. And obviously that was a, a, a big commitment for me. I don't do that because I'm trying to win a popularity contest. Because believe me, I'm trying to win a football game. All right, and I'm trying to create a program, okay? And I, but I understand the value of what local players do for us uh, and, and what it did for us at other programs, and that's why we're doing what we're doing. Um, really, I just want to thank a lot of people. Um, I want to thank a lot of the local uh, coaches, and I apologize, I, mean, I, I really want to shake every single one of their hands. Uh, I lost four days because of weather, and that, that's critical. Uh, so I wasn't able to get in every single high school. I did the best I could, but I tell you, I'm just so thankful that they're embracing what's going on and the enthusiasm and, and the uh, momentum that's going on here on campus. Um, the, the, obviously, my staff and the, uh, the job that they've done, um, really, recruiting is a 12-month process, and, and really, when you talk about just the days we're on the road, we try to do it in 12 days. And, and we had uh, three prospects. Their only FCS visit was us. Every one of the other ones were 1A visits. And um, so that tells you a little bit about the connections and what, what our staff's got going on. And, and really even the local businesses stepped up and, and we did some car things and we did some cookie cakes. And just, you wouldn't believe what it takes to put on a visit. Not just the amount of people that uh, that takes and our faculty selling this university uh, selling the, the education, and that's obviously why they, they'd come here. And you would not believe um, how many parents talked and raved about the, the people here in Cape and the people at the university and, and the support staff. I mean, I'm not going to name names because I know I would forget people. I'm not smart enough to do that. Um, but I'm just telling you, the best thing we got going is the people, right? The people in this university, the people in this city, in this region. Uh, make you want to go to work every day, and I'm just so very, very thankful. This was difficult in the, in the fact that um, we only had 11 uh, scholarships when I took the job, and, and I'm thankful of that just from the, the, the standpoint I didn't have to try to you know, sign 25 fulls. Um, but to be able to sign 22 players, uh, 10 of them local, uh, with, that, with, those, with those kind of numbers, I just feel like um, you know, it, it was a foundation built um, and I'll close with this. This is a happy day for me because now I can focus on my own team. And that's, that's the hard part about all this whole thing was, you know, I cheated our team and I gave all my attention and, and gave everything I got to our recruits and, and their parents and all that stuff and had to rely on our strength staff and, and our support staff to, to carry our team through and, and they've done a good job. But I can tell you this now, I can't wait to get up tomorrow and be with my football team. So. I'll open it now to questions, Jeff, if, if, if um, that's fine. So. Coach, were you surprised by the amount of local talent when you, when you first really started uh, reviewing that and looking at some guys? No, I knew. I knew right away there were some. When I was at Toledo a year and a half ago, we actually were recruiting a local player. And so I knew way back when, and, and obviously I've been in the region, so I know what kind of talent is, is through here. Um, and that's why, you know, the very first day out on the road, I, I did it. Okay. Well, you know, we had, you had seven weeks from the day you're hired from today. So you talk about that very short amount of time to put together a class. I believe you said before you had no commitments. That CMO had no commitments to start with, right? So how did you, day one, sit down and, and make this plan of what you were going to do over these next seven weeks? And what, was, what did that plan look like? Well, the first thing I did was get the staff together. Right. And every recruit that called, and every email I got, I said, hey, look, Nothing matters until I get my staff, so you gotta give me some time. Got the staff together, and then just really uh, got them on board with the philosophy and our recruiting plan, and then we went out and attacked it from the inside out. Um, we went, uh, I went out locally, because I could go make those decisions right away and get in front of those, those kids and those coaches right away and get going, and, and we really just, we, we kinda, um, kinda seek and destroy method. We sent them all, to Memphis, okay, and we just swarmed the place. Every coach I had went to Memphis, and every coach I had went to St. Louis, every coach I had went to Kansas City, and every coach I had went to Southwest Missouri, Springfield Joplin area, and we just tried to smother it 
come back in a week and just and try to figure out who we had that we had a chance at. And then from there, we kind of branched out in, into some of our other territories. So, you know, you said you haven't got to talk with your own players very much. So how did you evaluate the needs and decide what you needed for the team without getting to spend any time with them, really? Well, even when you talk about need base, like I just believe in trying to sign a team every year. You know, so whether, you know, need-wise, like I, I'm going to get several linemen, D-linemen, and, and try to sign a class, a whole football team each class. Um, you know, Celine Powell was, was a, 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 um, on staff last year, and um, also we, we kept Joe and Steve Hendry and uh, Brian Curry on that were all part of the staff. And so they kind of gave us an idea, and so we went and put a wish list together, and it was like 68 scholarships. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. So, when, you know, we, we went and just tried to do the best we could. And um, there, were, there were some needs that, that were bigger than others. But at the end of the day, you know, we, we just tried to put a whole football team together. Looking at, oh, go ahead. Now, in your view, what's an ideal number of scholarships to have to work with? You, uh, you should be in the 15s. Okay. Yeah. Just looking at a lot of the fans, and we've been following a lot of these guys, and it's, I can't run them all down, but there's been some really dynamic players as far as good kids and also really good football players. Uh, guys like Monroe we've seen in Fowlert uh, and some of these. Uh, you know, these are some guys I know that a lot of people are looking forward to. You could, could you elaborate on some of the area guys at all that you got, some of the things you like? Well, I mean, uh, they, they fit the same mold as all of them. You know, the first question out of my mouth or out of the assistant's ass is, do you love football? And I, I don't want to hear it. I want to know what you've done. And I tell them it's, it's in our recruiting model between one and 10. 10 mean you can't live without football. One mean you could quit tomorrow. Where would you rank yourself? And if it was five or six, I, it, they, have a nice day. This is too hard, okay? And you have to have a passion for this game to be successful. And, and so that was the number one thing. And that's the thing about these, these guys in the area is just their passion and their love for football. And, and then the same thing is, are they committed to getting a degree? Are they committed educationally? And, and they all, um, you know, pass that or they, or they wouldn't have gone, gone any farther. And um, we're certainly, there's some big names in the area that we're able to get, um, but really uh, they're all make something bigger than just themselves than one, one single individual and there's some names in there but really it's about the 2014 class. And you also always look, everybody looks at the quarterback of course uh, Anthony Cooper it seems like there's just a wide range of, of interest around the state in this guy and you guys got him. We did and uh, you know it's it's about ties and relationships and uh, Joe Wells is his head football coach and he's a Hall of Fame coach in the area. And, he used to coach at a little school called Cassville, Missouri, where Coach Toop was a, a mighty, mighty football player back in the day. I, I actually carried the ball, believe that or not. But uh, in Cassville, that's where my dad still lives today. Um, but he got on the phone and he just said, hey, Coach Toop, let me tell you something. This guy's a winner. We went from six and five to 11 and two, and it wasn't because of my coaching, it's because of this kid. And, um, you know, that kid wanted someone to believe in him and, uh, and now that he, he's committed to play here, and I'm excited that he's on our team. Okay, so speaking of quarterbacks, Anthony Cooper and Griffin Pickler, what, you know, what do you expect from them? Are they going to be competing for a role quickly on this team, or what do you? What I tell them is if I'm giving you that much money, you better be competing, <laughs> okay, or that was a mistake, okay? And both of those guys are in that, that mold, so I expect them to compete for a, a position right away. Um, that's why I've given you that much money to come in and, and do that. And, you know, from a quarterback standpoint and all of them, like uh, number one thing is I want a, a high character individual. They're both high. They're going to get some academic money here even. Um, they're they're top-notch individual high-end dudes. And uh, that's who I want to be touching the football every time. Is that what binds all the quarterbacks? I mean, we look at the two quarterbacks. There's, there's some differences between them, it seems like, from their playing as far as what they do on the field. So. What is it the number one thing you look for when you're recruiting a quarterback? Other than, you know, as far as, is there anything on the field you look for first, besides the character stuff? Well, we, we just ask two or three non-negotiable questions. Okay. Like, let's make this real fast and easy, right? Like, if you're a bad leader, like, it's over, okay? If you're not very good academically, we move on, okay? And if you're a statue back there, thank you, have a nice day. So you have to be, like, 
you know, we're going to have to have a mobile quarterback. Like, we can't just sit back there like Peyton Manning and expect to, to do that. We have to do some things, and, and from a, even from a defensive can standpoint, you know, you got to be able to um, move the pocket and just create plays with your arms and your legs. What do you consider the strength of this recruiting class? The, the strength of this class, I think, is the them wanting Southeast. Like, they want to be here, and you would not believe the buy-in value from the bricks and the pictures and just, they, they love Southeast already, and they're um, already, uh, you know, with social media and all those things, like they, they already seem to have a friendship with each other in the class. I'm full of them, but you mentioned it earlier. I'd like to jump back to it with the official visits. And I, I saw, of course, on Twitter and stuff, you guys got the cars and you got the cheerleaders out. Is that something that's, that's normal? You want to do that all the time? Or is that something where, okay, we have 10 guys coming today. We really need to step up and do something extra special here. No, that's, that's a standard. I mean, you know, this is a one-time impression. They mm -hmm. get one visit and you got to roll the red carpet out. And, you know, these are 18, 19-year-old kids. And, and you hear, hear people saying, man, is Obama here? <laughs> and just getting excited about that and making a big deal. And, and to be honest with you, that shows a commitment. Like the, the band members, the cheerleaders, and, and they're coming to, uh, to greet you on your, your first time to campus. And I think that, that really shows the, the families and the, the prospects just how important it is, uh, you know, football is to them. Right. And then the, the local players, did you have. Um, people in the community reach out to you and share their, you know, excitement or anything? Absolutely. Uh, well, first of all, I met anybody, you know, didn't have an opinion, right? <laughs> and they're all good. And I appreciate every single one of them. And, um, you know, that's the thing. That's the networking and, hey, you know, you get an email here, or you, you, you follow up there and, um, you know, everybody's connected in some way. And, and it certainly helped us sign a couple of players. I saw you yesterday, you said people are excited about our team. It's our, you know, our team. And you said the people you talk to have been excited kind of like that. But is there any specific example of something you can point to where you think you've seen people kind of be excited or what makes you think that they're taking ownership of it? Well, I was I was trying to find some cheese dip at Schnucks for Sunday Super Bowl. Uh -huh. And it's, I don't know if you guys ever try to find Rotel <laughs> for cheese dip. Like it's. I don't know where they put that. My wife does all the shopping, so I'm like searching all around for that. Some complete stranger just come up to me and, and um, said, you know, we are starving for a winner here. I'm so glad that you're here. You know, and, and remind me, hey, don't be wearing sweats and snooks no more. Because they know who you are and, and things like that. But man, I, I just tell you, I, I appreciate the fact that everybody is buying into what we're doing. I'm going to crush you on something a little bit and, and the local guys and that do you see Daryl Monroe as a running back? Do you see him as a defense or do you see him as somebody you're going to have to decide on? He's a running back. He's a running back? Okay. Why is he a running back? Well, have you seen him play? <laughs> no, I, I believe it or not, I actually haven't. Well, I mean, a that. year and a half ago, I was sitting mm -hmm. in a 1A mm -hmm. looking at his film and going, man, this dude is like Adrian Peterson. And I'm not saying it's Adrian Peterson, so don't say that but his his uh speed to power and his ability to accelerate is is off the charts um you know so that's where we'll start him and and um you know he's got good ball skills we can get him the ball several different ways and um the the best thing i like about daryl is just his he's a competitor most guys that are that high end will play down to their competition they'll play down to, even though it's a little bit better but he wants to dominate, and, and that's, that's the thing that I love about him. Is there anything else you want to say specifically about any of the guys from this area uh, that you want to comment on? I know we're talking Charleston Players Valley. It's, there's so many to mention, you know, but. No, I don't want to mention any name. I, I definitely just, you know, more so is just the, the group and the fact that there's, some, there's something special there. I hope they come here and have a lot of pride about where they're from. And, you know, I want them to go home if we lose a game, get pimped out at Casey's about losing a game from the local farmer about, hey, what you doing up there at Southeast? You know, how come you lost that game? Like, I want them to carry that pride back to their communities.